heading down the road about a little over a mile to put in about a two and a half acre brassica plot tonight. Got the old 5,000 out. Um, this is, uh, I'll talk more when I get there so you can hear me better. So made it to the spot. This side of the road right here is about three quarters of an acre. And then the other side of the road is uh, basically close to two acres, but some of it over there is kind of wet and I won't be planting it. It's almost like cattails out in the middle. Um, that side is probably about an acre and a half. So total, this is a little over two acres and it'll all be brassica this year. Next year, I'm gonna try doing a lot of corn and beans. I didn't quite get around to uh, you know, early enough in the year to plant corn and beans in this spot this year, but hopefully next year I will. Um, this is, like I said, about a little over a mile from my grandparents' farm that way. And this is a totally different deer herd. Having a big food source here will really help. The shed hunting here, I have permission to shed hunt here, but not, not to hunt it. Um, the landowner here is just mainly concerned about um, trees and just taking over these little fields. There was, our, there was some trees out here and they got bush hogged down and I sprayed it off. And uh, the first, this will be the first year this has been planted in, a, in many years. It used to get planted by the farmer. And uh, I've had my eye on this spot for the last couple years. And this is gonna be an awesome winter food source here. And hopefully it'll hold the, the deer in this area a little bit more during the winter time. And maybe I can find a few more sheds on the property. Um, so I'm gonna start ripping her up and I'm gonna try and get this all planted tonight. This, I sprayed most, the whole field mainly, um, probably three weeks ago, and the landowner came in here and ripped it up with his big piece of equipment, way bigger than what I got here with the 5,000, and uh, it did a really good job. And I just gotta rework it up because we're supposed to be getting hit with about two inches of rain tomorrow. This ground is already packed down from the last heavy rain we had. And I could just broadcast the seed right on the soil here, but it's pretty compacted already from the last rain, like I said. And it's going to kind of pull these seeds in a little bit. So to get the best germination possible, I'm going to get the whole ground loose, nice, perfect seed bed, and then come in here with a drag and kind of cover up some, probably a little bit too deep. But I've had pretty good luck just doing a light one pass with the drag to kind of get most, mainly everything under. But I probably won't do every area to see the difference. Some areas I won't drag, other areas I will, just to kind of compare, but see there's a few weeds coming back, so I gotta, that's water hemp right there. That's my main concern. Um, I don't want water hemp to take over these fields. This is, that side's a little bit lower than this side. This is kind of a sandier, drier spot, but enough talk, I'm gonna start ripping her up. Don't got all the time in the world tonight. It's already five something, so. So this is what we got. Got two bags of honey hole. This, this, and this, and this are all half acre bags. So right there, that's two acres. And then I bought a good almost three pounds of tillage radish. Um, got two bags of the honey hole, one bag of the Imperial Whitetail Winter Greens, and one bag of the um, Northwoods Whitetails Sweet Feast Brassica Blend. This is the Jeff Sturgis Blend. That's the Brassica Blend he plants. On all his plots so this has the northwoods radish right there that's 20 percent tillage, tillage radish but uh these two these two bags don't have any tillage radish and i like to add in tillage radish with all my brassica plantings because it's like the most attractive brassica in the early season like september and october once you get closer to december it gets frosted out a lot quicker than the kales and the other uh forage rapes do and then they obviously got the turn up the purple top turnips in this variety there's a very little purple top turnip in this variety so i gotta think i think uh i'm gonna put this one on the small side of the road over there 
and uh, along with some honey hole. And then on this side, I'll do uh, honey hole and winter greens really bad. And then I have some soybean seed from this year. And the soybeans, all I have is just a little bit in here. Uh, you can see just a little bit of this bag. And I'm going to just maybe in one area, like closer to the edge here or something, or maybe on that side closer to the edge, I'll just very lightly, like very thin, broadcast a few soybeans here and there. And uh, just have a little bit of late planted beans in here for some early season greens. They're not going to produce anything, maybe like 10 pods per plant. You know, it's middle of July here. They might produce something, though. Usually, we don't get our first frost until, like, middle of October. So, yeah, I'm going to start uh, mixing up some of this stuff. I'm going to start on this bigger side here. Out of all three of these mixes here, here's a good look at each one of the tags, what's all in it. The Northwoods Whitetail Seed is probably the most diverse blend with the most different types of plants out there. These collards are one of these uh, Bra Winfred Brassica, one of these ones is like a four foot brassica that the deer don't really eat much on, but they got, you know, a little bit of everything in there. Not too many, uh, these Northwoods forage turnip, forage turnip. One of those is a purple top turnip because I planted them in an area and they it look exactly like purple top turnips. So pretty much the same thing. This is the winter greens. This has very little um, purple top turnip, 0.84%. And then basically 50% forage kale and some dwarf Essex rape and some tall tine turnip. I don't think those tall tine turnips make bulbs like purple top turnips. They just have leafy tops, which the deer don't really eat on much either, at least in my area. And then here's the antler king. This is probably my favorite mix out of everything. It's got, you know, 33% trophy rape and then 20% dwarf Essex rape, which I know dwarf Essex rape is a little bit shorter variety, but all these rapes and kales are pretty much the same when it comes to late season, the deer, if everything's green, the deer are gonna eat it. And then it's got about 10% purple top turnips and some Winfred rape. And then I'll mix in, you know, the tillage radish with everything here. All right, so you can see what I got left. Plants a half acre, bags about half full. And you see that non-worked up area in there? I plant all the way to the road and then to the edge of that worked up area, straight up in a big rectangle right here. Not on that side yet, all the way down to the woods here. A big long rectangle, probably about an acre. And uh, cause like I said, this is about two acre side. That's a, almost a one acre side. And I got, now I did add some tillage radish seed. That's all the brown ones in there. But if I would have not add that, I probably would have had a, maybe a third to a quarter of the bag left. And that's supposed to plant a half acre, so I should have gone through two of those bags in about that size. And the seeding rate looks relatively good. The first time I went up and down and I checked some areas and it looked a little bit thin. So then I went back and forth like a big, so I made a big checkerboard. You can see all my footprints out here. I probably already walked a mile back and forth out here already. I haven't not even done yet. And you can see two seeds there, seed here, two seeds there and seed there and i'm not even seeing all of them because you know they're pretty small they fall right in this dirt and all, some of them are just disappearing right away and uh here's another spot let's just check it out look at it. two there one there one right here a bunch right here and you don't want to plant your brassicas too thick because then they turn yellow and you know they the deer don't really eat on them and they only get about shin high so honestly too thin is better than too thick for sure Well, 
back out here tonight. Got some areas that are a little thick, so that kind of sucks. This is the first area I started seeding in this big uh, two and a half acre brassica plot. And uh, I just, I kind of thought I wasn't using enough seed. So this is the area I came, I seeded like this. You can see the areas where it's a little heavier and a bit, little bit thinner. And this is the area I came back through and went crisscross back and forth. The rest of the plot, I, I didn't really do that on. This I believe is winter greens and uh, honey hole mixed and with tillage radish. Here's a tillage radish. Here's like a four, this is a forage rape or kale, this one. This is probably a purple top turnip right here. This is one of them forage rape or kales. This is a weed. <laughs> Weeds aren't too bad in here yet, but there's definitely some starting, or a lot I should say. But the brassicas are looking pretty good. Got a few soybeans scattered in here. Um, yeah, I went super light with the soybeans because they're not really going to produce anything. And I'm not really going to hunt here. This is just going to be like a shed shed hunting plot, I guess. And the people that hunt here, you know, they'll benefit a little bit from this. But here's a water hemp. This is probably what this field is going to turn into a after a couple years of planting here. This is kind of lower ground. You can see it's pretty dark, not super dark, but the more years I plant this, the more and more water hemp there's gonna be in here. And you can see right here is a pretty thin strip, which is all right, because these brassicas in here, like this purple top turnip right here, that'll probably be like a softball sized ball by the end of the year. And like this forage rape right here will have leaves like a foot long, whereas like the ones in these little bit more crowded sections might even start turning a little bit yellow and stuff in some of these really thick spots, but then you got like these ones out here with plenty of room. It's just hard to get the whole plot perfect. Um, you can kind of see where the thicker and thinner spots are. And then for some reason, there's like a really thick spot right here. Man, that looks way too thick. This side over here, I should mention is the, uh, I believe this is the, uh, I never exactly wrote it down, but, or made a little drawing of what I all planted where I kind of forgot already I think this is some of the um what should we call it the uh Northwoods Whitetails um Sweet Feast Brassica blend but I'm not sure exactly if this is this is what this is I think it is because these ones look a little different but I don't know I'll I'll definitely be able to tell where this the Northwoods Whitetails Sweet Feast blend is because those ones get like those tall three foot um really stemmy brass because the, there's a few of them in there that the deer don't really eat on but you can see in the furrows from the disc you can see like a row of brassica this area did not get packed down at all maybe some of this did where i drove i had the drag maybe that's what i'm seeing here i had the drag that night and i i dragged maybe half of this side and maybe that's where these thicker spots are is where i got better germination with the drag so I probably I shouldn't have dragged it, but I'm not sure. Like right here, you can tell I didn't I didn't run the drag through because I can still see the furrows from the disc right here and right here. Whereas maybe right here, I ran the drag through because I can't see any furrows really. Because I can see a furrow there and a furrow there, but I'm not sure. Definitely some areas a little thick, but I'll take a quick peek over there on the other side of the road. So I'll see you when I'm over there. Well, here I am over here on this side of the road. You can see they're super thick along the road there. But uh, this side, I, I barely dragged at all. I dragged some of this stuff up here a little bit, closer to the road. And then in here, this side is way thinner than what the other side is. Cause I didn't really, I dragged at least 50 to 60% of that area over there. Maybe even closer to 75%. I, most of the th it just got too late and I just didn't really drag much of this you can see right here is one section I did drag you can see where it's a little bit thicker and I can see that I can still see the lines a little bit from the drag and the furrow is gone where there's one furrow from the disc here and one furrow from the disc right over here where it's a little thinner and I remember I did drag along the edge there and look at how thick it is along the edge see that look at that difference so people that tell you that, oh, you can just broadcast brassica and just leave it right on top of the surface of the soil, it'll do fine. Well, 
if you do do that, you gotta you gotta definitely seed thicker, because this is all seeded at the same population. And I remember distinctly remember running the drag through here. You can see the lines from the drag. See all those little tiny lines? And then right here is a big furrow from the disc, this bigger line. So that's brassicas right on top. And we did have a two, we had like a two inch rain like a day or two after I planted this. So this had plenty of moisture to pack the seed in and get good germination. But having brassicas deeper is better than having them shallower because this is the proof right here. I mean, every soil's different. So this is pretty powdery ground. They should have packed in pretty good with that rain we had. And this is the proof right here. You can see nothing hardly, which is not a bad thing. I mean, I got like two, acre, two and a half, three acres of brassica here. I got plenty of brassica. I just don't know what happened right here. I don't see hardly anything. It looks like it's only the, like the tillage radish that made it or something. But, uh, a few soybeans here and there and then you get over to this edge and man it's a completely different story look at how much green there is here almost too thick in certain spots i'd say like right here is like the perfect thickness you know we got spacing between the plants about one plant per square foot is like perfect like what you see right there that's about perfect that's a little thick this is pretty good right here too so i mean there's plenty of plants in here. I'll have plenty of food, that's for sure. But uh, it'd be nice if the whole field was a little bit more uniform. But you'll see in the next update, these things should be huge. This is looking pretty good already. This is August 2nd, and they're already, you know, a couple inches tall. The first month is when they really grow, grow the slowest. And uh, they haven't even been in the ground a month almost now. But, uh, man, this August here, they're going to really take off. So, yeah. All right, so here we are. It's been a while since you've seen this plot. This is the two acre plot right by the road here. It's like knee high and looking amazing. This was the drier, a little bit sandier side. And you can see we got some grasses up there, but overall not too bad. This is the side that was probably a little bit thinner too. You can still see these gaps in between the brassicas, but they're huge. I mean, look at the size of this leaf. This is like a kale or forage rape plant right here. And then right here we got a purple top turnip, or maybe this is a, a seven top turnip, one of those turnips that don't really make bulbs. I believe this is some of the Jeff Sturgis, the Northwoods Whitetails blend up here on this side, close to the road. That blend has some of these really tall ones, like that one right there. Those things will probably, you know, they'll keep growing and they'll get like three to four feet tall, that variety right there, whatever that is. Here's another one of those really tall ones. What I've noticed is the deer didn't really eat on those too much, but they ate on them a little bit. And then here we got a purple top turnip. You can see the bulb starting in there. But like even in these really thin areas, I mean, they're filling in these gaps. I mean, look at how big these plants are. This was no fertilizer, but it was a fallow field for probably five to 10 years. You can see we got some of the tillage radish in here. These ones have actually been nipped down a little bit already. Like I said, these are the ones that the deer like to eat on an early season. You can see this one has been nipped off too. Some of these leaves are missing at the ends. And then here's some of those thin spots up here. So this was by far the thinnest spot on both sides of the field. I'm actually surprised more weeds aren't in here. This is like a first year plot. Usually year one, you have the least amount of weeds after you get a good kill. Cause some of these weeds in here are gonna go out to seed. And, and this was all like perennial, like cool season grass, like kind of just sod. There was some ash trees and a little buckthorn. And it was all just goldenrod, like perennial weeds. But now these are all annual weeds. They'll start dropping more seeds year after year. And you'll end up with more annual weeds year after year. The more, So usually the first year you actually have less, the first two years you actually have less annual weeds. You might have some perennials like canary grass, goldenrod, or just simple like normal 
lawn grass that will come back but we got a pretty good kill in here and there's none of that that's still in here but in these really thin areas you can just see these brassicas are absolutely ginormous i mean these are like foot and a half long leaves like there's my foot i mean one plant that's like taking up like almost two to three square feet that's my dad <laughs> but uh yeah you can see it's pretty thin in here I could come in here and put rye down, but I'm not even going to do that. I'm not going to worry about it. We got plenty of other greens here. This is like perfect up here. Look at how every plant is just absolutely huge. I'll take you over to the other side of the road. I got some pretty thick sections in there where it's definitely a little overseeded. But like what you see here, like right over there, is basically perfect brassica spacing where you get pretty much canopy closure. They're filling in all the gaps. And the plants are just absolutely huge. Um, you can have, you know, full canopy closure at like three weeks with brassicas, but that's that means they're way overseeded. And then, like I said, I got some thin spots in here, but these thin spots, I'd rather have them thin like this, where these plants get absolutely huge, instead of being too thick. Because I'll take you over next. I got some areas over there where they're probably going to start turning yellow some point in September because they're so thick right now. I'll be I'll take you over there in just a second and you can actually see a few soybeans in here you can see this has been nipped off multiple times by the deer but it's actually starting to flower out I have broadcasted a few random soybeans if you remember just to kind of add a, a little bit of an attractant in here because they're gonna you know stay green until we get a frost being planted in July like that and you can see up here close to the road I'm not quite to the other side yet you can definitely tell that they're a little thick on the edge there. They're already starting to turn yellow. That's not what you want. Right up close to the road here, you can literally see how thick they are and they're starting to turn yellow. And these, I mean, they'll, some of this stuff will stay green, but a lot of this stuff will just burn up through September here and turn yellow and brown and won't even offer much food for the deer. I mean, look at the difference, too thick a little bit better and then in there where it was really thin that's like perfect let's cross the road here and check it out i mean we got like two acres over here brassica this is absolutely huge got some thick spots and some thinner spots see we got all this annual all these annual uh weeds coming in now we got foxtail we got giant ragweed we got water hemp here's an ash tree that's coming back like i said there was a lot of them in here here's a soybean plant right here got a lot of big velvets in here like none of these weeds were here this was all just like grass goldenrod and trees now it's you know a lot more of these annual weeds are coming in but Next year, I'm gonna pl I plan on doing corn close to the road so people can't shine in here a lot. This will probably be getting shined a lot come late season. I don't know. But uh, I'll put in corn and then have some beans back there or brassicas. Haven't really made up my mind yet, but there is some huge turnips in here. I mean, look at that. That one's already bigger than a baseball, probably close to a softball already. We still got like a month of growing left. And right here is kind of that, some of that lower ground. You can see all these uh, Phragmites, those Phragmites that are coming back. This had cattails in here at one time. I, I can't believe they're actually growing here because this is not this is wet, but it's not like extremely wet. You can actually see a little cattail plant coming up right here. This right here is like a little cattail plant. And then you got all these Phragmites, like these long, tall, grassy things that are invasive. They're coming in right here too. But yeah, another spot where it's too thick, it's already turning yellow and brown. That brown is a phosphorus deficiency, and yellow is probably nitrogen and, and potassium deficiencies. And then you go right there, it's not quite as thick, or maybe there's, it could be just as thick, but maybe there's just more nutrients right here where the brassicas look taller. And then on the other side where it drops back down, a little low spot over there, they're a little bit shorter over there too. Seems like in these low spots, the brassicas never do quite as good the corn will grow fine in this low stuff, but uh, um, usually brassicas 
don't really do the best, but they grow. I'll head right up that corner is like that driest, sandiest stuff. It actually looks where, where the brassicas look the best. I'll head up there. But you can see this is, this was pretty wet when I was tilling in here. Here's a soybean plant looking pretty good. So that's a good sign because I've, I've had issues growing soybeans in, in our wet spots a mile away from here with iron chlorosis issues where they turn yellow. And this bean is clearly dark green. So if I plant soybeans in here, I should not run into a, hopefully don't run into an iron chlorosis issue where the, the beans turn yellow and pretty much do nothing. That's another reason why I wanted to put beans in here to see if they did turn yellow. Because a lot of our ground at our farm has iron chlorosis issues and these beans would definitely be yellow by now if there was a chlorosis issue in this soil. But yeah, these these brassicas over here look pretty good in certain areas. This is actually one of the thinnest spots where I'm at right now on this side, and this is where the brassicas are the biggest. I was really trying to get the whole field to hopefully look like this, but I remember when I started seeding up in this corner, and I seeded like down and came back, you know, a couple times, and I hardly used any seed, and I was like, man, I don't know. Because when you're broadcasting, it's super easy to overseed brassica. So then what I did is I went back and forth like this, the short way, and just threw a little bit more in. I didn't do that over here, but it looks about the same. Maybe some areas over here it's too thick, but uh, overall I'm really pleased how the amount of rain we've gotten. I did not know how wet this August was gonna be, but we've had plenty of rain. The longest stretch we've had without rain was like a week and a half. Um, so we, we had plenty of rain this summer. I could have got away with planting these brassicas probably a month later if I would have planted these, you know. I planted these, I think, early to mid-July. I can't really remember. But uh, if I would have planted these, like, you know, late July, early August, it would be, you know, September 20-something right now, and it, they would look like this, which would be fine. But once they get about this big, they don't really get too much bigger. You know, they'll, they'll get decent size a little bit bigger but the turnips might fill out a little bit more but the leaves maybe grow another set or two of leaves but pretty much what I'm looking at now is what they'll look like you know a month from now they'll just get a little bit bigger some thin spots in here too which is fine I think that side over there definitely did look a little better that ground over there the whole side is a little bit drier than this side but yeah looking pretty darn nice once uh i'll do an i'll do an update in probably december or sometime in january this plot too when all this grass and all these weeds are all brown this whole field will be green everything around here will be brown leaves will all be gone this will just be like a green food source like you wouldn't believe you, you'd be able to see this from a couple miles up <laughs> it'll be so green these brassicas, there'll be brassicas left in here. I, I, I'd be surprised if the deer ate up all this. You can see on this edge over here, right here on this edge, here's the food plot. Here is the grass, the ash trees, the milkweed and goldenrod. This is what the whole field or the majority of the field looked like last year this time. And, uh, the landowner here came in and ripped it up last fall and then he ripped it up in the spring i didn't know who, if it was going to get planted into corn and beans by the farmer that rents from him and then i asked him he's a friend of the family we've did some drive hunting over the years here we don't really do much of that anymore but uh i asked him if i could just put a food plot in for you know to kind of attract the deer to his property i have permission to shed hunt here hopefully i can find a few more sheds on this side of his property i usually only find them on one side of the property this is all creek bottom right here and really good fall and summer and habitat but they usually don't winter in there that good hopefully having this food here will hopefully hold a few more deer close by but uh yeah these brassicas over here don't look quite as good even though they're pretty thin but we'll see I can't really remember where I planted what anymore. I should have 
drew a little diagram of what I, I know for sure that that section over there was uh, winter greens and honey hole mixed. I think this was more, I can't really remember anymore. I had three seed, you know, I had the winter greens from Imperial Whitetail, I had Antler King's Honey Hole, and I had the Northwoods Whitetail Sweet Feast Brassica Blend. And uh, certain areas I planted this, certain areas I planted a mix. So, a lot of milkweed in this little section right here coming back. So, yeah, over here it's actually looking a little better. These plants definitely look healthier than where I just was. You can actually just see it from here. Right where that fallen down tree is, there's like a little semi-circle right here on the edge where it must be just a little bit lower in nutrients or something. A lot of that's just yellower. Even the grass over here, the weeds look stronger over here too. These brassicas clearly look pretty healthy. Yeah, look at this. This is pretty evident, pretty obvious. I mean, look at how good they look right here. Knee high. And as soon as you get close to this edge, maybe it's just a shade thing too. Right on this edge here, they're not doing much of anything. That's pretty weird. Super short, a lot taller. Could be just a shade thing right here too, but I don't know. There's deer tracks everywhere in this plot. And there'll probably be even more come fall, October, November. There's a lot of does that bed right in here. This is all doe bedding. The bucks bed further back. And uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of daylight activity right down in, maybe not in the food plot, but like right near the side of the creek here and, and all this. There'll be, with all this food here, this is more food than what there's ever been because this is normally just a fallow field. This will really hold the does close this fall. Well, this is the first Braska plot video of multiple videos i gotta get out i got a lot of stuff to edit here in the next month um so hope you enjoyed the video there'll be more brassica videos coming um and i'll sometime in the next week or two here i gotta do an update on a lot of my corn and beans everything's tasseled out everything's waste a lot of waste high beans i gotta do updates on many different ways i've planted stuff this year and this is uh one of my one of my only tilled brassica plots you know um the more years I plant this, I know for sure the more weeds that are going to get in here. And eventually, when I till these plots, I'm going to end up with straight weeds and it's not going to turn out this well like it has in my grandparents, where I basically have to do no-till brass because if I want to get weed-free plantings like this. So, yeah, see you in the next video, guys. Um, they'll be coming out soon.